Freezing semen, a lot of people are unaware that you can actually breed stud dogs beyond the grave. I've seen stud dogs that have been dead for over 20 years and still have puppies. So freezing semen is something that every dog breeder should at least know about so that then they can preserve. So that if you have key important studs or dogs that you need to breed to um, in your program, you can breed to them beyond the grave. Stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this episode of Breeders Hacks. What you need to know about freezing semen off of stud dogs. What's going on, Bully Fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Lion Bulls, bringing you another episode of Breeders Hacks. So today, I'm gonna take you guys with me. I gotta go take my nitrogen tanks to get filled. So I just wanted to, this might, this might be a little bit of like a vlog, but I just wanted to share with you guys what you need to know when it comes to uh, freezing semen off of stud dogs. So freezing semen is the process where you take liquid nitrogen and you slowly start to freeze the semen um, off of a key stud dog, preferably while he's very young and healthy, so that then if anything ever, God forbid, happens to him, you can still breed to that dog beyond the grave. So. The reason why I'm doing this episode is if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen one of my studs, Double Cross, has passed away. Well, fortunately, we were able to freeze semen off of him. We were able to freeze his genetic material and his semen before he passed away, um, a month actually before he passed away. So we are still able to do breedings off of him and be able to continue to still have him throughout our bloodline even though he's no longer here with us. Um, it wasn't really a health issue that had caused him to pass away. It was a tragic accident, but that's why you freeze semen off of your stud dogs. Um, it's something that a lot of breeders aren't aware of. And it's something so simple as you can go to a reproductive vet, you look online. I mean, when I first learned about it, all I did was a quick Google search and started looking up, you know, freezing semen on canines. Uh, I did a quick Google search and I found places that were local to me that were able to do it. There are reproductive vets that know how to do it, but you're gonna wanna shop around a little bit because for example, I went to the closest one to me and it turns out that that particular vet actually isn't fond of my breed and actually didn't wanna do it. They still took my money anyway. Robbery! Robbery! So you just wanna do your homework, be mindful, there are few breeders out there that know how to do it like myself you could always you know go to a breeder like that as well that may know how to freeze semen um, or you may want to pay for the education and learn how to freeze the semen yourself but long story short is freezing semen is where they slowly freeze the semen and it's stored in a liquid nitrogen tank and it could be good for a lifetime um, that's what i've actually learned is that freezing semen i mean it's essentially good for a lifetime i mean i've seen dogs i've seen puppies off of stud dogs that have been dead for over 20 years i went and visited my friend over in new jersey and he has puppies off of a dog that has been dead for over 20 years i think the oldest semen that they have to date is I think like 40 years old or something like that. And then for other species, I think it's up to like 100 years old that they have had stored to my knowledge. Um, don't quote me on it. You need, the key thing is having liquid nitrogen and there's a big misconception because a lot of people don't think that you can get liquid nitrogen, but here where we're at in the East Coast, you can easily go to, where I, where I go is is a place that they do like HVAC and, and different types of heating and cooling and welding and pretty much you can just go and they'll fill up the tanks for you. With your tanks, you just need to make sure that they're always full. If you go to a clinic that does it for you, they'll ensure that you know their tanks are always filled and so on and so forth. So um, I'll drive over there, fill up my tanks, especially when I know I'm gonna be doing freezing, like I'm freezing some new semen off of my stud dogs. Um, I'll go ahead and you know make sure all my tanks are full because the tanks don't stay full forever. They do slowly start to evaporate and that's why you have to stay on top of them. Whoever you go to, you need to make sure that they stay on top of the, their, their liquid nitrogen because if they don't have a very systematic process, you know, if that liquid nitrogen evaporates, then 
your frozen semen is essentially no good. So you definitely wanna make sure that they stay on top of it. I stay on top of it because the, the dogs that I have frozen in my tanks are extremely important. Um, I have some dogs that have are now passed away and I have some dogs that are still present but play an extremely important role in my program. And that's who freezing semen essentially is gonna be for. It's gonna be for people who have key studs that are extremely important to their program. Um, if it's a stud dog that maybe you're building your entire bloodline off of, then you're gonna wanna free semen off of that dog. Um, another scenario may be, it might be someone else's dog, um, but they don't particularly have frozen off of the dog, right? So there was a stud dog that, um, and I, I wish I would have done this, but there was a stud dog that I really wanted to incorporate into my program. And I kept telling myself, yeah, I'm gonna breed to him one day, I'm gonna breed to him one day. And then, you know, one day never came and then he winded up passing. So I was like, oh man, what I should have did was while he was still alive, I should have just paid for the stud owner, you know, to ship the semen and I could have froze it. Or if you don't know how to freeze, you could have had the stud, I could have paid the stud owner to go to his local clinic and freeze the semen. So um, that's another thing. It may be someone else's dog, but you have big plans on incorporating that dog into your breeding program then you may want to pay that fee if the stud owner is not willing to do it themselves. Um, and essentially, if their dog does pass away, well, you're going to be the only one with being able to breed to his dog. He probably won't even be able to breed to his dogs unless you sell him a few straws. People always ask when you free semen, how many breedings do you get? And it all depends on the dog, essentially. Um, depending on how much sperm cells he generates is gonna tell you how many straws he gets. So one dog that I have, um, right now I'm working on building up his semen. So he only gives me two straws, which is enough for two breedings. Where another dog, he's young, and that's why you wanna do this when they're young. You wanna look into freezing semen off of your stud dogs when they're young. You can only do this with males. Let me just throw that out there um, for, for those, if I'm not being clear enough. You only wanna do it, you can only do this with males. Um, there's other things that you could do with the females, but th this is only for males. What you wanna do is do it while the dog is very young and, and has plenty of like fresh, motile, very, very strong semen. So I would say around one to two years is probably gonna be your prime time to do it. So freezing semen has been around for quite a while now, but a lot of breeders are still not aware of it. So today um, I'm actually freezing semen off of some of my stud dogs. I have my good friend of mine, the world's yours kennels. He's coming over. We're freezing semen off of his stud dog as well. Um, he experienced something similar. Um, his He has two stud dogs and one of his stud dogs, one of his boys, they're both precious to him, but one of his boys he really planned on using in his program. And what winded up happening was, unfortunately, the dog had passed away. So he was heartbroken. He wished he would have stored frozen off of that boy, um, but it wasn't as easily accessible to us as it is now, because <laughs> I'm able to freeze the semen. So especially being where we're particularly at. So anyway, he got his other boy, we're freezing semen off of his other boy so that then, you know, he can definitely ensure that at least he has one of his stud dogs that he can use and have frozen off of, you know, yet again, God forbid anything happens. Or here's another thing, right? And, and I don't wanna scare you guys with the whole death thing, but another thing is the fact that Sometimes it's not about freezing semen just for death, right? So I'll give you an example is there was a very famous stud dog who he was just bringing bread so much that what the owner had did was, you know, he had frozen he had frozen stored off the dog. So he stopped breeding the dog like in person. He stopped pulling the dog. He stopped shipping out semen freshly off the dog. What he did was he gave the dog a month break because the dog was being bred damn near every day. He gave the dog a month break and in that month break, he was shipping out frozen semen that he had collected off of the dog a while back. So you that that's another thing is, is it's not just about freezing semen for when a dog is dead. Maybe you have a very popular stud. Maybe you're going out of the country and you have someone who wants to breed to your stud and you're not in the country and the stud's not in the country because you're in a show in China or, or whatever the case may be. I mean, this isn't gonna be for everyone as far as that particular scenario, but that's just another example. You might be out of the country with the dog at a show or vacation or whatever, and you have breedings that have to 
you know, take place. Well, the nice thing about having your semen frozen in a cryo bank or, you know, someone who freezes semen or a reproductive specialist, whatever the case may be, is that the fact that you can make a call and say, hey, I need X amount of straws uh, sent to so-and-so so that then they can do their breeding and the clinic or whoever it will be, will you know put the straws in a shipping tank. It won't look like these tanks, it'll look like a different tank that they use for shipping. And they'll go ahead and ship that to the individual and that individual you know, will bring it to their vet or it'll be shipped to their vet or whatever the case may be. They'll do their TCI or surgical because um, that's the only thing. With frozen, you typically only wanna do it with either a TCI or a surgical. Doing the artificial insemination isn't too, too ideal. Um, but anyway, the, this, the semen will be shipped to them. They'll do their thing. They'll take the canister, ship it back to whoever had shipped it because those canisters are expensive. And you, this whole transaction took place. Meanwhile, you're in another country doing whatever it, it may be, you know? Or yet again, the dog may be passed away. You could still not be around and the clinic, you know, does everything for you. And even though the dog's not here. So there's a lot of advantages to having frozen semen off of a stud dog. Um, and like I said, a lot of people aren't too familiar with it. And it, it's, it's a great tool in my opinion. And I think it's something that um, isn't talked about enough. And especially after losing one of my boys, um, I've severely realized the importance of knowing how to do this and, and having frozen saved off of your dogs as a breeder, how important that is. And I'm just grateful that I've learned how to do it now so that now I can do it for, you know, friends and other breeders and most importantly for myself. God forbid something happens to a dog or I'm not around, whatever the case it may be, I can still have something off of my dogs to continue out my program. Another thing is as simple as, as a stud owner, it's very enticing for someone who wants to breed to one of my dogs that I can tell them, hey, listen, I have frozen stored off of my dogs, meaning, your breedings, when you want to breed to one of my dogs, it's guaranteed beyond the grave. It's guaranteed for life. If something happens to my dog, your, your breedings are still guaranteed because I have frozen stored off of my dogs. So as a stud owner, it's very reassuring that you can tell a client this that may want to breed to your stud dog. And they're going to say, wow, you know what? If something tragic does happen to his dog, I'm still guaranteed my breeding off of that same dog. I won't have to settle for another dog or whatever the case it may be. So I tell people my breedings now are guaranteed beyond the grave. So like I said, it is a process. Make sure you have time for it when you're doing this because I know for me, for example, when freezing semen, it takes a long time because of the fact that you're slowly freezing the semen. If you're doing it yourself, it, it can be like a four hour process minimum. Um, if you're going to a vet <laughs> or someone that's gonna do it for you, it makes things a lot easier because you're just bringing the dog, they're collecting the stud dog, and then you're on your way. Um, but you still do want to know, you know, how many straws you got. There's something, there's some things that you need to be mindful of. You know, how many straws did you get? You know, um, the, the the ID identification that they use in in sorting their system. And if you're dropping off your stud dog, and and a, a vet clinic or breeders, you know, freezing for you, then <laughs> I guess that makes it a lot more easier. But like I said. Um, it definitely is a process. Like I said, it could, take a, it could take up to four hours. So like when I do it, for example, or prime example, me and uh, having my wife and having my friend, the world's yours, Kennel Frank, helping me out while I was doing it because it took about four hours, the whole process to do it. it, it it's really nice to have some extra hands on deck. And I knew, it, it. I blocked off the entire day. We started approximately, <sighs> I, we probably started around 11 o'clock and we were done done by maybe four or something like that at the same time yes did we take breaks and you know hang out and talk and so on and so forth yeah <laughs> but um no in all actuality i mean it, it took it took a big chunk of the day i'm not even gonna lie so and then afterwards we hung out talked stuff like that so with freezing semen i just wanted to talk about it and just express the importance of it because like i said i lost one of my boys one of my dear boys um and and i the only thing i can really say is at least i have frozen off of him so i can still do my breedings and have kids off of him so i wish when i first got into the breeding 
that I knew how important this was and that I wish I could have, you know, done it with other dogs or had it done for other dogs, things like that. So definitely something to look into. And as a client, maybe you don't have any stud dogs frozen yet, but maybe you're thinking about breeding to a dog or maybe you have two dogs in mind and one breeder says, well, I have frozen off of this dog and the other breeder says they don't. To me, that might be a deciding factor. If both dogs are similar and one has frozen and one doesn't, I'm probably going to lean towards the person who has frozen because I know that if for any reason the breeding can't take place because either the dog's not around, say the dog passes away or the dog's out of the country, my breeding should theoretically still be guaranteed. So it's just something I want you guys to think about, start looking into, do your homework, do your research. There's classes available um, that we can actually, you know, put you in touch with so that then you guys, if, if it's something you wanna learn how to do hands-on, um, it's something you can learn how to do hands-on as well. Um, as well as, what I started doing for some people, because I had so many people reach out to me, we started freezing semen for some people. They'll ship us the semen and we'll freeze for some. So I want you guys to do your homework, do your research, look into, you know, freezing semen, the importance of it. Um, there's more information out there if you want to dig deeper. I'm going to probably do some videos, some more talking about bits and pieces of, you know, uh, what we do when it comes to freezing semen and so on and so forth. So definitely be on the lookout for that, guys, if you guys want to educate yourselves more on it. The necessary tools and equipment and so on and so forth. And I'm not going to lie, I think that's a good question that if you ever are looking to breed to a certain stud ask the stud owner do they have frozen off of that stud dog and if you plan on using that dog as a key dog in your program then maybe even ask the stud owner hey are you open to freezing semen off of the stud you know if i if i pay the fee or whatever the case it may be so today was an eventful day i hope you guys you know enjoyed the b-roll and seeing kind of what goes in is involved into freezing the semen like i said this was like over a four hour process and i'm so glad that i was able to help my friend freeze semen off of his stud dog as well as being able to freeze more semen off of my stud dogs um just to ensure the progression and the longevity of our dog breeding programs there's no insurance when it comes to dog breeding but this is probably, in my opinion, the closest thing to an insurance policy that you can probably have or get. Because if the dog is, has passed away or is no longer here or is not around, whatever the case may be, you can still have your breedings done with that particular dog. And that's what's so important. Like I said, there's no insurance policies when it comes to dog breeding. A dog can be here today, gone tomorrow. A dog can be sold to another country, be gone tomorrow. Um, anything can happen. A dog can get sick, can't be bred when your female comes into heat. But having free, frozen semen is the closest thing to an insurance policy because it, it ensures that you will be able to breed to that stud dog. And that's extremely important. That's why I put this video together for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed the B-roll guys. Um, I had fun shooting it. If you guys want to learn more or, or drop a comment down below and let me know what you guys want to see more videos of. But I just figured I'd have this conversation with you guys, especially um, with the unfortunate passing of my son, Double Cross. So anyway, guys, as always, I hope this information is helpful. I hope it's useful. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of Breeders Hacks. All right, guys. Double muscle bullies. We're getting a boy COVID semen tested and we're going to freeze his sperm. Stay tuned for Germline 2024. We're coming out crazy. Big shout out to Sandra, Mrs. Double Muscle Bullies, and Mr. Angel right here, Double Muscle, for hooking us up and we're getting this shit today. And stay tuned, fellas. Big shit coming from the World's Yours Kennels. Germline coming strong 2024. Shout out to, once again, Double Muscle Bullies for helping us out and making this shit possible for us. Peace. I'm going to get the hoodie. that. Oh, hold on, you're cut it off. Yeah. You've seen the process. Yo, this shit ain't simple, you know what I'm saying? You gotta have a lot of patience and time. This is not for everybody, you know what I'm saying? So if you decide to do this shit, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you have patience and appreciate the person that's doing this shit for you because this shit takes a lot of time. We've been here since nine o'clock in the morning through the whole process. And it's about to be, what time we got? Uh, 
What is it? Seven o'clock. And it's seven p.m. East Coast time. You know what I'm saying New York time. So, people, we appreciate the people that's helping you. You know what I'm saying? Because this shit takes a long time. It's a process. So, whenever you're ready to get your dog shit frozen, hit up Double Muscles out here in the Tri-State area, wherever you at. If you out of state, you know what I'm saying you can ship up your sperm. You shit got to get tested. It's a whole process. So, you know, educate yourself before you want to do some shit like this. Peace. Se cagó el bebé. Oh, man. That's a good one. Yeah. And this is what happens too, because we have to fucking do a lot of shit today. <laughs> Poopies. <laughs> okay, 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 right, okay. Let okay, me okay. go deal with Junior. Mommy, going to change. That's it. You done?